Hello and welcome to the Game Mess Game Club. This time we are talking about Return of the Obra Dinn, originally released for Windows in 2018. It came to consoles in 2019. I didn't even know that. That's interesting. This is Mike Minotti from the Game Mess. I got a bunch of friendos here with me today to discuss this beloved and narrative driven Indie game. Is it narrative driven? It's more mystery driven, I suppose. A favorite of one Jeff Grubb, as I recall. I remember he was very much into this, uh, especially that year when it came out. I know it was pretty high up in his estimations for game of the year that year. I just kind of never got around to it for some reason. So I was pretty happy to use this as an excuse to play this game and see what the fuss is about. I have some history with kind of mystery centered games i think that they can be a lot of fun although it's hard to compare this to any other game really it is like a first person walk around solve a mystery thing so you might think it's a little bit like mist or something but not really it's not it's not like a traditional point and click adventure game at all right you're not you're solving puzzles i don't even know if calling them puzzles the right thing you're basically playing guess who if you ever played that board game you're kind of doing guess who and you're running around finding clues and you're using your magic uh, death compass to see the last moment in people's lives. And from that, you gather other clues and all sorts of uh, fun stuff like that. So I guess overall, I'll just jump in right here. And I you know, I would like to hear overall thoughts from people if they want to get in here. I did really enjoy this. I kind of I saw what the hoopla was about. I thought it was a lot of fun. I don't know if I loved it like some people do, right? Like there are some people, I, a lot of people who have come at me with this is like one of their favorite games uh, ever, right? I don't think I can be quite there with that. I guess just because, I, you know, sometimes guesswork did a lot of legwork for me. Maybe that's on me. I think in general, mysteries are a lot better without supernatural elements because once you have supernatural elements well then the mystery could just be it's whatever the, it wants right the, now all of a sudden the game has its own rules and i don't know what they are it's kind of hard to tell exactly what to think there but having said that stuff in general it's a very interesting game it's a very unique game visually striking obviously uh, but i would like to hear from some other people ronnie did you want to speak i see that you are off mute although you also just joined so i don't know if you didn't know but beef you are also off uh thing so why don't you go ahead i get get a casual i know that's him um i'll go yeah. first because i actually am probably one of the ones who well i don't know obviously what no one else is but i do actually love this game this is probably my favorite game from 2018 just because like oh, i'm not into God of War or Red Dead 2 as much, so this is exactly something I love. But I I can tell, like, yeah, why some people might have some issues for it. I definitely didn't love it the first time I played it. It's kind of weird that I grew to love it more on repeat playthroughs, because you would think, oh, if you, you would know all the puzzles, it's not as fun. But I found, like, oh, there was a lot more, like, to find in this game and ways to solve things, so it actually did grow to love it more as I kept playing it. Okay, it's interesting. Anybody else? I kind of want to get a bit more of the temperature. I want to hear how people came in on this. You think it's an all-time classic? Randy, go ahead. I also love this game, and I I would put it in one of my recent favorites, at least. Uh, I, I'm a very logic-oriented person, and I, I liked parsing that stuff out. The guesswork, for the most part, I thought was fun. Because it kind of even if I was wrong in my assumptions, when I got rewarded for it, it felt great. Like Even if I was like, oh, I think this guy... It has this backstory and therefore I'm going to link him up this way. And every time that screen went black and went boom, boom, I'm like, Oh yeah. Like, just give it to me. It felt so good. And you know, noticing small details, you know, rewards attention to detail. It's like, it's kind of like work, but it's fun work. I don't know. Like it's a, it's a really interesting game too. And it's very, very different. I, I, I right. quite enjoyed myself. And you are sometimes making educated guesses. Uh, it's a big turning point when you realize just how much you can learn in those initial sketches that you're given at the beginning, right? Like, it's not just, like, the small clue. Really pay attention to what people are wearing. Pay attention to who they're standing next to. Pay attention to where, you know, where they're standing by. You can glean a lot more from that than you initially think. Go ahead, Shoji Wolf. Yeah, uh, I... Kono. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh... I am one of the ones that also kind of 
love this game. Like it, it's, it just blew my mind. Um, there are very few games that I could think of that just made me feel so dumb yet so smart at the same time. And that's like weirdly an awesome feeling um, just because you'll, you'll be stumped on something for the longest time and, and you're getting to that point of like, you know, the answer of it and you just have to find that right combination of, you know, this is that person and this is how they had died. Um, but just, yeah, that, that attention to detail on everything from, you know, the note, like things that I, I wouldn't think that like most people would, would actually notice, but like, they're there for a reason, like these tiny little details, like the, the numbers on their cot and, and just like little things like their, uh, specific items that, that they, they carried like the, the, the one, um, the one it might've been a seaman, uh, had that sword, that like little kind of scimitar type sword with them. Right. That was like his signature item. And, 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 you know, that's how you, you kind of were able to better identify him. Um, there's just so many small little details that were just so clever to me. Like, like I just, I loved every minute of playing this game. Okay. Go ahead. Inufe. Um, I think I'm more in line with you, Mike. Like I, I liked the game. I didn't love it. Um, I've never found, you know, I guess quote unquote, this is a in, uh, insurance adjuster walking simulator. If you want to <laughs> boil it down. Um, I did love the, the story and kind of un- unfolding it and just the different perspectives that you have to see through it. And, and the mystery that kind of unravels from there, there was a bunch of times where, you know, kind of the others have echoed where you, you kind of just start piecing everything together in your brain, brain and you just find that one logical piece for where, what link it is to fit it all in in the puzzle. And I think there's some, some of them, at least when I was playing, I was just like a complete guess and I just ended up getting it right. Um, and I think that helped a lot. But uh, yeah, I think it, it definitely uh, was, I missed it in 2018 and there was a lot that year anyways. So, but it, this is I'm glad I went back and, and eventually finished it. Yep. Oh, thank you so much, mostly void uh, for following. Uh, yeah, I am glad that I played it and I did enjoy. It. I don't want to seem like I'm down on it in any way. And it was really fun to kind of be given this giant task, right? And to slowly whittle away at it, identifying all these different people, right? At first, it seems like this impossible thing and you're desperate for big clues. You keep waiting for people to say, in like those memories, hey, Mark, right? And But you don't get very much of that. You get very little people saying, hey, this is, you know, the surgeon, <laughs> you know, making it easy for you. You do have to do a lot more contextual stuff than that. Now, I know you say you didn't want to talk too much about it because he gave up on the game pretty quickly, but Sean is here. Nobody else has been very neg about this game. I am interested to hear from Sean uh, about why he didn't like it and why he bounced off it pretty quickly go ahead sean this is a safe space uh well part of it is what you said at the top where supernatural elements were introduced and that just sort of shakes my whole suspension of disbelief a bit where it's like well like like you said it's like well you can literally explain away anything now like i know or at least i think that this game doesn't do too much of that but uh from what i've seen but yeah, I don't know, because it, it's weird, because I'm big into detective games. I love them. I, I love the Ace Attorney games, all the Doug and Rampas, like everything like that. It's hard to put my finger on exactly what, but something about like the vibe and like the the way it's a like semi-silent game, at least in the beginning while I played, and you're sort of like, you know, collecting the clues slowly and everything. None of that clicked with me. It I guess it's a pacing thing or something, but yeah, I don't know. I just didn't care for any of what I did experience in a little time that I uh, spent with it, which was about about an hour. So it was a little less than an hour, but I just immediately knew that it wouldn't be a game for me. Go ahead, Randy. I'm just it. I'm just going to follow up on that silent game part. Uh, I I thought this was going to come up later, but I thought the sound design was amazing. Like I thought it was half the experience just going to those memories and hearing the story and i just thought it was really well done from a a a scope perspective this was made by one guy and just the idea that he got some really professional sounding 
actors and scenes and stuff. And it just, it, it has to be good enough so you can understand what's going on and just, just get enough clues. And I had a visual representation of what was going on basically at all times. I, I really, I love the sound I, to call it a silent game surprises me. Well, I, I guess I kind of know what, Sh- what Sean means. It's, it's definitely a very understated kind of a game. It can be a pretty lonely feeling game, but there is, yeah, there, there definitely is some strong sound design elements. Uh, so I, I could understand both sides there. I do get what Sean means though about, and you know, I brought this up first, the supernatural elements, because it, 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 it introduces some mystery elements that, it seems like the game can't resolve or resolve. Like, what is the memento mortem? Why do we have this magical uh, uh, pocket watch thing that can see when a person dies? Why did the original guy have it? Right. Uh, and it's a mystery that, yeah, there, there is no resolution to that. What is going on with the Kraken? Like, you know, the first time I see those giant enemy crabs, right? I'm like, well, what is this about? Eh, it turns out they're giant enemy crabs, really. There's, uh, unless there's something else that I am uh, missing there. I guess I would have liked this even more if it was just, hey, like the weird, like, you know, maybe somebody uh, got sick and from there things got real sketchy and people fought over a treasure and people kept started dying. I think that would have done more for me than magical seashells or whatever it was. Go ahead, uh, Beef Hammer. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm kind of, weirdly enough, I'm kind of similar to you guys, uh, weird, like, uh, supernatural things in games kind of do turn me off, but I don't have that problem with this one. I think that's because, for me, the framing of the game is, like, you're not kind of important in the story. You're literally an insurance broker for the Dutch East India Company, so in my, if I play kind of, just enjoy that kind of almost funny aspect of, like, all this weird stuff is going, but I'm literally just here doing my job, trying to figure out what these people died just for, you know, for this company. Um, we mentioned like Lucas Pope. That's kind of similar one with his last game, like, you know, where it was papers, please. And you're literally just a border patrol person and there's so much going on, but you're just trying to do your job. So I think that's kind of the framing of it doesn't bother me, but I get why you guys might have an issue with that. No, that's fair. Uh, also, thank you, RP, for following. Soji Koto, go ahead. Yeah, um, I guess two two points on the the kind of like fantastical elements of it. Um, one, I after kind of completing all of it, um, I just I went back and just kind of watched and read a few interviews with Lucas Pope on some of the stuff, um, and. and that's one of the apparently one of the reasons that he introduced a lot of the fantastical elements was because you know to have this many um you know crew and passengers and have them all die off in these weird you know mysterious ways um apparently like the main reason a lot of that fantastical stuff was introduced was because like it it wouldn't it wouldn't necessarily be natural or believable to just have all these people die off all of a sudden so i guess that's one reason why he kind of introduced the um the fantastical element to to make it quote unquote more believable i guess but um to to me like at least in terms of like um you know back in in like that era in like the seafaring times um you know you see with other games like pirate games like sea of thieves and stuff like that i guess the the fantastical lore with with krakens and mermaids and and all these things um is not necessarily more believable but i feel like that was just so ingrained with within that um within that time frame surrounding sure. that here, that here stuff with monsters Seafaring. and all that jazz yeah like it, it's not necessarily more believable but it's so intertwined and enmeshed in with all of that that it felt like it was um again not believable but it it felt like it was just sort of okay to be part of that, I guess, or, or meant to be there. Uh, Randy, you can go ahead, but maybe keep this question from Giggy uh, in mind, uh, who asked, what did you think of how the story is presented? Something for us all to ponder, but go ahead, Randy. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll build off the, the supernatural elements real quick, just input there. And then I'll, and then I'll answer that question. Uh, so I, I didn't, I I'm fine with supernatural elements if they're set up and they're not cheap. And in my opinion that it was set up very well and I don't think it was cheap. They could have done this where 
the mystery was the supernatural part, but no, the Kraken shows up within the first five minutes. You see uh, other monsters very sh- shortly thereafter. It's not a surprise. I mean, you, you're handed the watch <laughs> right out of the gate, and that's you know pretty supernatural. And you know it, that that there could have been a world where the mystery was like, oh, th- there was someone that was uh, in disguise, and you had to try, and that that would be a frustrating. You could see a world where magic comes into play, and it's difficult to find who the killer is and how they died and so on and so forth. Uh, as it is, I think it works pretty well because if, if you didn't have that, you you run the risk of just having a plague killing 80% of the people on board. And that's not necessarily very interesting either. So I think it adds a lot of interesting ways that they could die. And there's, you know, and, and one thing that is apparently true, I looked this up, you, there are, it will register you if you get something that is close. So I for example, that. yeah. <laughs> so if, if, for example, uh, there are multiple, yeah, the way that it works in case people aren't familiar is that you select uh, what the person's name is, how they died. And if they died by somebody who killed them. And if you're in the ballpark, so like it, it'll, it'll register like slash versus spiked or something like right, that. Or like, like impaled versus spiked and stuff like that. Yeah. Right? And, there, and there's, there's one kill, I guess, spoilers, but there's one kill where someone gets blasted by a cannon inadvertently and the Kraken's holding the cannon. It will register either the Kraken as the killer or the person that lit the uh, cannon as the killer. Nice. That's, that's fun. Like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> so I think if you remove that part, I think something's lost there a little bit, but I, I, I see where you, I could see where you're coming from. I, I know that there's like a, we tend to like grounded stories and stuff like that, but I, I was on board because they set it up really nicely. Uh, now that I've been talking for so long, I'll still answer the question about the story. I, I wasn't that thrilled with it necessarily, especially since you had to, uh, I guess I should say the way that the story was told because you had to replay a lot of the same stuff over and over again and i I kind of just got it jumbled around in my brain a lot i didn't really start to piece together what happened until at the end really when i'm kind of just walking through it you know chronological order more or less but i i was completely lost up until right near the end basically i think it's fun how you get to experience it in this non-linear way and kind of go go you you do see it through the lens of depth what death which is uh Definitely an interesting way of going about it. Joyce, thank you for following. Go ahead, Inufe. Yeah, the uh, the nonlinear uh, fashion was is pretty neat. Um, I think the thing that bugged me the most is I wish there was a way that you could get to the memories without having to always track to wherever you needed to go yep. to start them back up. We'll get there. big UI problems. We'll, we'll get there. I promise yeah, we'll when, get there. Yeah, when you're, yeah, when you're getting towards the end and you're flip-flopping between a bunch, especially with... Some of the ones that are quote unquote out at sea more than the others. Oh, you yeah. have to go through other people's memories to get to that memory. It's like daisy chain your way to get to the memory you want to get to. And it's like, why can't I just sort of do this from the book? At some point? Yeah. Like, right. And you're like, oh, wait, I daisy chained the wrong spot. I went to like four, four instead of, you know, four, two. And I can't go backwards now. I got to go jump all the way back and get there. So. But yeah, I, I appreciate the nonlinear storytelling. I think probably in 2018 is a little bit more novel. I think we've had a lot of nonlinear storytelling, maybe just um, playing so much Zelda lately that yeah. uh, <laughs> I'm getting used to it. Um, but yeah, I, I appreciate it. Uh, I mean, I think if you kind of went the linear path, I don't think the story would have been anywhere near kind of as interesting. I mean, they pretty much start you at the at very end of it, right? Um, and you can start piecing together what has happened at the very end, kind of. Um, but you have no idea about any of the supernatural stuff until um, you really start triggering it. And I like knew nothing about this game going in. So some of the story beats, I just had like zero idea what was really going on and trying to piece it together. Uh, and that was kind of my favorite parts is at the very beginning of when it starts revealing what what is actually going on. I want to read this uh, text submission we got from Octo, who's amongst uh, our members who couldn't join in person today. Octo said, can't attend, but just have to say Oberdin is a master class in making a true detective game with real deduction rather than picking options in a list like in most adventure games. The handbook is a piece of UI and puzzle solving is nothing short of genius. Whatever Lucas Pope tackles next, I couldn't be more excited. Oberdin is an all time great uh, video game. And, and they're certainly right in terms of the, I, I, it is a detective game more so than maybe something like a mist is where it really is more like you're solving puzzles or you know if, if x is y then y is z 
kind of things. This is actually using deduction in a way that is interesting, in a way that doesn't always happen in this genre. And I do appreciate that. And I liked that. Um, then from Wolf EG says, one of my personal highlights from the game is when searching for the fates of a few certain individuals. We know they managed to escape the ship, but it's hard to know what happened to them from there. I spent so long searching for some kind of information, but then to find the answer was in the journal itself was amazing to me. Such an amazing discovery. One to add, the soundtrack is way better than I expected. Been in my head ever since finishing the game. It is a, that's a good point. It is actually pretty good soundtrack. Like some of it is like sort of period appropriate, but other parts of it are just kind of good on their own right. I think there's a lot of suspenseful tracks there, which is very appropriate. There's a lot of things about the game that are just striking in general, that very unique art style. But the way to how you're kind of like surrounded in blackness and all of a sudden everything pops, you get a loud noise, you're suddenly staring at a person's body being torn into or, or things like that. I think that does quite a lot for the moment. Screaming Madden says, I originally played Return of the Overton back in 2018 on my Mac laptop. I had to play that game in a small window in order to have a stable frame rate. Yet, despite the technical difficulties playing Oberdin on Mac, I had a wonderful time playing it. It was my third favorite game of 2018, only behind Into the Breach and my game of the year, Celeste. Man, that was a big indie heavy game of the year, probably. Uh, he continues, I replayed Oberdin again on a Dell laptop, better performance there, and we'll say it's definitely a game that I wish I played for the first time again. I had a pretty good memory of what happened to most of the people in the Oberdin and managed to get the first six fates right with three of them being memorized and the other three being guesses there were moments where the first time i saw them i was in awe of the spectacle but seeing it again i was like oh hey there's sea kraken but as i beat the game again in under six hours i definitely have more of an appreciation of return of the Oprah then it's a masterfully made and unique game that has a satisfying gameplay hook of deducting the fates that oozes a great art direction rare in today's gaming landscape and an incredible score also quickly i'll name best and worst character best is carpenter winston smith what a hero Smith ended up being in chapter six. Worse, second mate, Edward Nichols. What's he see what he does to the foreman's uh, royalty? F that the Formosan royalty. F that guy. Yeah, I don't think anybody's going to argue that uh, Nichols is the worst character. He sucks. He kills lots of people. Those are sorts of dudes. Uh, go ahead, Shoji. I just wanted to chime in. I hated that guy yeah. so much. <laughs> We're supposed to, but geez, man. I, I mean... There, there are other bad characters. The captain's not that great either. He kind of sucks too, uh, especially with the little execution thing they do on the the, floor, the poor Formosan uh, fellow. And there's there's some other people just kind of getting by doing their best. But yeah, I guess I mean, I'm curious what you think about the cast of characters in general. But go ahead, Beef Hammer. Uh, I was going to mention one of my personal favorites. I think his name is Brennan, who shows up. He's one of the first characters you meet. Um, he's like the bald guy. And then he... But he just shows up, like, randomly. Like, he's also in the firing squad. I think he is, like, the one in the firing squad. And I, every time I just saw him, I was like, oh, there's Brennan. I love him. Even though, like, again, he's, yeah, just doing his job. But something about that, like, just seeing people show up all the time, that also, I think, kind of adds something that... Yeah. You don't really think... Yeah, you don't think about it, but it's like, eventually, oh, you start to recognize... Or, like, yeah, think about oh, all these characters, because... They'll just show up. It's pretty impressive how, because, you know, it's a very minimalist art style, and yet a lot of characters do stand out, and you recognize them from scene to scene. There's that one guy with the tattoos, and pretty early on, you see him get ripped in half. And you kind of, you see him just showing up in scenes all the time, and it could take you a while to really identify him. Uh, go ahead, Randy. I like the chef who <laughs> tried to eat the corpse of the uh, of the monster. And ended oh, up yeah, he, he, he has one of the more uh, stupid deaths, right? This and game is weirdly funny as well. Like it, it, it's comical how all of these people died, and, and it's like a domino effect, kind of like a Rube Goldberg thing of death, which is it dark on paper, but kind of funny in practice. I think it's intentional, but I, I had I was laughing a lot. Yeah, I sometimes I'm like, man, that. these people are dying at anything. <laughs> Somebody falls down dead. Somebody eats the wrong fish dead. Right? There's a you know, there's a lot of just in general, the vibes on this ship had to be bad after death number five, you would think. Go ahead, Shoji. Um, yeah, in terms of like the, the, the range of characters was just super interesting. Um, I think one of the ones that I liked uh, just overall um, was the the third mate, I think, the the Martin guy. Yeah, like um, 
he just he seemed like just like a a genuinely kind of like good guy i guess um, which was was kind of nice and refreshing yeah very very solid beard um and uh yeah that that uh that um maba guy that got ripped in half was like the first dude that got ripped in half he was it was interesting kind of seeing him and pop pop up in all these various places after after you know that's one of the very most like visceral uh things that you've seen uh, it, going into it mm-hmm. you know the, i think the game's pretty smartly designed for the most part like in the beginning it, it's pretty easy to identify some of the first people you come across but then there's that one guy the guy who kind of jumps down into the captain's quarters that takes a while before you really can figure out who that person is and that's kind of a you know, a hint that will take you through to a lot of different places. I got one more text mission here from Gerber, who says, Obra Din, straight off the bat, I like that your character is being a dude or dudette uh, is a random thing. Just assumed it would always be a guy based on the time of the game's setting. Oh, I never realized that. I never realized it could be random. Uh, voice acting is good. Being able to use someone's accent to build towards your assessment of their identity was a useful tool. Would have fallen apart. The Scottish accents, for instance, were all Sean Connery parodies. Shamefully, however, I did do a little racial profile when, when identifying characters. Well, he looks Indian, so he must be one of these guys. Not sure if that's just part of the game. Hopefully it is. Otherwise, I'm a bad person. I mean, it, yeah, it, it, like uh, the same way where I felt a little comfortable doing it. But <laughs> it's like, yeah, you're kind of meant to do it like that. You are supposed to identify people based on what they're wearing, how they uh, talk and how they look a bit. And yeah, makes you a little comfortable. But you probably have to imagine that. You know, detectives do, in fact, do things like that. And uh, it can be racial profiling, I suppose. That's a that's a touchy subject. Interesting one to think about. Um, Beef, do you want to touch on that right now before I continue on with Gerber? Yeah, yeah I was just going to say, yeah, that's always the f- all, kind of the funny thing. But it's also weird when you play with a, someone like I've played this with my roommate before we did, and I watch you. And yeah, you always when I think Mike mentioned something about racism. I just type in chat like, yay, discrimination. Yeah. Because but it is like the weird things. Every time I play is like the tr- biggest trouble I get is there's four guys all from China and they're all top men. And I'm always like even still like when i get to them, like oh, who is who because like yeah it's just very hard they all do the same job they're from the same country so you don't it's always hard and like you know without these differentiators right no exactly uh go ahead Eno. it's also kind of funny because i think the game says in the very beginning look at the pictures and look at who they associate with and basically saying yeah back in that time they're all just going to stick with each other. And they all kind of do just... And, and in the pictures, too, when you have to look at the pictures to figure out who's hanging out with each other, they are kind of all stay together based on their uh, ethnicity. So Right. There's a yeah. couple times where that can get you in a little trouble. Like, there's a group of Russians, and there's a bunch of Russians sticking together, but there's one amongst them who isn't. Like, there's four Indian dudes, and yeah, those four Indian dudes are pretty much always with each other. Excuse me, go ahead, Randy. I love that how all these people are hanging out together playing cards during an execution. Yes, yes. That, that, that's Fun what the time. drawing is about. Well, is no, I think those are two. Those are two separate oh, yeah, yeah, drawings. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's Randy. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, Gerber continued. Uh, speaking of bad people, that Nichols sure was a bastard. One negative I saw mentioned during the month was it would have been a good to be able to use the journal to jump between scenes once you found them. I'd have to agree with that. Overall, I enjoyed it and was happy to have an excuse to go try it out do we want to say anything else about that ui because it was annoying to not just be able to jump right to a scene i wanted to go to it was sometimes oddly confusing to even get to the right character profile i wanted to get to to start doing some of that stuff uh randy go ahead yeah i mean there's not a lot to say about it i think it is annoying i think most people would agree uh, it becomes more than annoying and downright criminal during the ones there where you have to go inside a memory to get to another memory, the yes. ones out at sea and stuff that, that I'm like, okay, that <laughs> you, that's too far. I, I, you really needed a menu option for these ones at least, because I don't even know which memory leads into which. And I, you know, it, it yes, it, I, I think most people would agree with that. Anybody else also get a bad ending? Cause I did. I kind of just, at one point I was like, I guess I'm, I couldn't find anything else. I was like, maybe I should just leave. Then I left and got a bad ending. Go ahead, Hinufe. Yeah, I did the same thing in the very beginning. Uh, or I think at the first time I went through, I was the game was just, 
the guy starts calling to you. He's like, hey, we got to leave. And I'm like, oh, OK, I guess we're done here now. <laughs> well, he's so like, the storm's the coming. I'm yeah. like, yeah, storms are bad. I guess we should leave. Well, you can come back later. Right. And he's like, oh, I guess and not. the game's like, no, nah, you effed up. You got to restart. So. Although so did I did you guys fr- not get them all. No way. I left early is what I'm saying. And then like you, you, the game at first, I panicked because like I was like, uh, hey, can I go back? And you can you can there's like a rewind time thing to oh, put okay. you back on the boat from before you left. But I was freaked out for a moment there. Uh, go ahead, Beef. Yeah, I was going to say, I, yeah, because I'm like that. Me, that's just signifying that you found all the bodies. But uh, I don't actually think the game. But I don't think the game does say that. I think it is just the guy saying, hurry it up. There's a storm coming. But that is what that's what it means. But yeah, there's yeah, nothing that like, makes more sense. There's nothing gamey to just say. Uh, yeah, like this will be the end. You better finish. Right. Because like, yeah, at one point. It's funny because this game, you can hit a wall for pretty long stretches of time. And then mm-hmm. once you finally get a set of three again, that really gets the ball rolling. And then you can really kind of snowball into solving a bunch of cases there that can get you all the way through to the end. Go ahead, Randy. Did you guys accidentally get one right and it threw off your whole train of thought? Uh, no, whenever I accidentally got one right, it was usually a good thing only. There's a couple times where it threw off maybe a couple things, but I was generally happy about it. Go ahead, Shoji. Yeah, I, I had the similar experience to what Randy's mentioning. Like, I, I would start lining up a few people, and I'm like, okay, I think you know this person is this person, and um, I had like a third person lined up for it, and then I actually, you know, inadvertently would would get something right, and like maybe I'd have like one or two of those people get cor- be correct choices, but then like the third one, I'm just like, oh, I still don't know who I, who this guy is, and it just kind of would throw things off. So it just that was an interesting aspect. Because I felt like there were times where it was throwing those curveballs at me when I was trying to line things up pro- properly in anticipation of, of getting them right. So I don't know if this is a criticism or a nitpick, but when you do like get all of them right, you, you, you do what you can and then you kind of have that epilogue and you get the monkey hand, you go back. That was neat. But I kind of kept hap- waiting for like the twist to happen or something important. Nothing important really happens during all that. You just it just helps you identify exactly what happened to the last few people. But there's nothing surprising about any of it. At that point, you already know. Yeah, they're mad about the mermaids and the 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 seashell or whatever. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I was missing something there. Go ahead, Randy. No, I think you're right. Endings are hard, uh, I, I, but I think it kind of shot itself in the foot by hyping it up a bit. It hid that chapter, and it kind of made you think like, oh, the real mm-hmm. answer's behind that chapter. And then you get there, it's like, oh, no, wait, that's just kind of what, it's just in between what I already know what happened. Like, I, I kind of put most of this together. You added a little flavor to it, I guess, but no, there's nothing really uh, surprising in here. But I guess, how do you end something like this other than, well, you got them all good job right <laughs> exactly but like the way they hid that from you i was like oh there must be something really juicy in there yeah there isn't uh go ahead uh shoji yeah similar to what you two are saying there, there was i when i experienced that there was nothing really profound hidden behind that door in the lazarette like yeah the way they kind of hyped it up it made it feel like there was something huge but ooh, in reality there was just a couple loose ends that got tied up in terms of a couple people that you didn't know the exact dates of and you're just kind of like uh, it's a bit of a letdown really but, right turns out they um, were killed these, by monsters <laughs> like, yeah they're killed by monsters and then like you know i guess you know why the the captain that and um, said he took care of things like they gave a little bit more context to that because that that final um, mermaid had gotten freed and, and given the seashell and they threw it overboard or whatever. But but yeah, nothing like hugely profound that completely changed my viewpoint or thought of things at the end. Go ahead, Beef Hammer. Yeah, I was going to say, and I think the other like part of it is it's not just the story, but like you would maybe think, oh, it's one last challenge, but it's not even a challenge to solve. It's no, pretty the easy ones to do because yeah. you're in this small little room. It's like I think like Randy said, like, I mean, it's all one big puzzle. Like, how do you just end it? But I think, yeah, that's kind of the problem is it's not challenging and it's like it's not entirely like a twist. So it's just kind of of, of finishing the job. That's it. Uh, wait, 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 so I fin- finishing the job. One second. Here we go. Most people are beating it right now. Okay. There we go. 
<laughs> uh, all right, everybody. Anything else that you would all like to kind of uh, to, to, to talk about here as a bigger topic before? Because, you know, I, I, that's what I was thinking about. Uh, but go ahead, Randy. What do you want to discuss? Kind of just a rundown of favorite memory gettings. Like, I, I don't know. There's a couple of times where I, I felt super great about the way that it worked and about myself and how I felt super smart and stuff. And so when you get to the bunks and you, or the, I guess the hammocks and you can see the numbers next to them, I thought that was a fun little moment where I'm like, Oh, yeah. I could put that. Th and then there's one of them that's covered Wait up. Wait a second. I never put the, I saw those numbers and never actually figured out how to make use of them. What did I yeah. miss? Oh, well, I was they're, just they're, that's where they sleep and their number corresponds to what they are on the log. So if someone is sleeping in hammock number 45, that person is number 45 on the list. Oh, that yes, that so, would have helped. And then there's another one that's sleeping in a hammock that his arm is hanging out, but you can't see his face, and his arm has a tattoo on it. And I noticed that tattoo. I'm like, ah, oh, all right, cool. Oh. And then later on, <laughs> like I saw that tattoo again way later, and I saw that tattoo again. Oh, wait a minute, pretty sure he was sleeping in that thing. And then of course I had to begrudgingly walk all the way back to the thing where yeah. the. But but once I saw that, I'm like, yeah, that is that, that tattoo. And I made that connection, and that got me another three right there. I'm like, yeah. That's and then there really was a cool. couple. Yeah, and it's really neat really cool. how I missed that and was still able to like solve everything eventually through other clues and other processes of elimination. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, I, was about, I missed that the first time I played, and then afterwards I found out too. And I was like, oh, I didn't need – it's only for a few that like really gives away, but that's so helpful. But it kind of, and I, I was like, oh, I guess that makes sense. Of course, yeah, they'd be assigned bunk, but they'd be assigned bed. So yeah, it still makes sense. Go ahead, Shoji. Yeah, kind of going off of what Randy mentioned in terms of like our favorite, you know, aha moments. Um, just uh, the I forget her name. The the one the one of the women that escaped. You're trying to figure out which of the two uh, who was who. Um, and like in the very first scene or one of the very first scenes, um, when you see both of them on the deck along with, um, I think it was Abigail when she got crushed by all the rigging, when, the, when the crack and attacked, um, I had figured that out because the one first, the, the woman that was standing first, like she had her hand on the door and you actually saw her like wedding ring on, whereas the other, other oh. woman didn't, she was not wearing wedding rings. So I was like, Jeez. Oh, that would make this second one miss. And then the first one is misses cause she's actually married. Um, and then like the other aha moment that I, I really liked, I could not, I was having a hard time figuring out what happened to the three people that, um, tried to escape in one of the uh, the, the little boats. Uh, it was like the bursar and then a couple other yeah. people. Um, it wasn't until like one of the many times that I was going back and forth where I was kind of hitting this wall when I realized way off in the distance there was that little you know rowboat getting flung up in the air by the crack, and I was like, oh, that's them. It's like just like those little moments like that when you had that like that click and it all snapped into into perspective. It was like those are really nice. Right. I got really excited when I saw the uh, carpenter the, in the carpenter's apprentice in that one room. I was like, oh, I got him. And then, of course, I mixed the two up for a very long time. And that was embarrassing. Go ahead, Inufe. Um, on the same thing with the wedding ring, I got to the same conclusion, but at a different spot. So when they're trying to escape on the boat and she shoots the guy that's trying to attack him you can look at her hand when she's got the gun uh and you can see the wedding ring on her hand and i can't that's how i came to the same style of conclusion Sweet, man i completely missed that that's really that's pretty interesting i don't um, know how it was able the, to separate those two the other yeah it could just be done there's only three females so right probably process we'll, yeah, yeah at some point i just guessed <laughs> yeah. um the uh, the other fun one was uh, the when they tie the guy up in the firing squad and you have to figure out which guy is actually actually shot him and everybody else that missed or what was the killing blow. Um, I thought that would that was also my other favorite one. of That, that was fun. a neat moment. Go ahead, beef. He, he just took mine. That was mine. Yeah, uh, the, I think the first time I played, I missed it because maybe it just didn't occur to me that four guys would three of them would somehow miss from point blank. And then I got kind of mad when I'm watching Mike play, and he just immediately gets it. He's I'm like, a genius. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I thought for sure I was gonna have to like push him to towards it, but yeah, that was a, yeah, that's also one I I really like. 
No, yeah, that was definitely uh, one of the better moments. I will say, like, um, with the people who escaped, like knowing where they went, for some reason, I actually didn't figure that out, figure that out until I got the not good ending, and then it was clear that they were all in Africa. I was like, oh, okay, well, at least I got that from doing that. Well, that's pretty good. All right, uh, go ahead, Randy. Is there a surefire way to know that they went to Africa? I guessed because the boat was close to Africa, and I just got it right. So for me, like, because I got the bad ending, I got the letter from the doctor, and it was from Africa. I was like, okay, well, if he's there, I'm guessing the other survivors are there, and that turned out to to be right. So that's how I did it. Uh, yeah. Shoji, go ahead. I couldn't. I couldn't find uh, an explicit moment that they said they were going there. You know, they they talked about going east, and I and I flipped back through the book, and I and you can see like where the chapters took place, you see where the, the, the over din is when those occur. And I was like, okay, if they're going to head East, I kept trying to select the smaller islands. I was like selecting the Canary islands, which were East of, of where they were at, but it never occurred to me that they were just going to row right past all that and make it to Africa. So it took me like a few guesses to actually get it. And I never found anything that explicitly stated, like we're going to, you know, escape to Africa. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, uh, beef. Yeah, I was gonna say we. You might. I know there's like a Wikipedia for this. You can. You might have to look it up in like that. I've just always assumed from the time. This like the third time I've played that. Like it's just saying, um, yeah, like they just went there because it's close. They had to follow the current because they're in a small robo. And I think the game only takes place like a few years after, and it's the 1800s. So they just have to stay in Africa because you know, can't get back to wherever they came from. So I don't know if there's anything explicit, but I think it's yeah. For me, it's just an assumption that they went there and they just stayed there. I think that might be right. Uh, go ahead, Randy. Yeah, not to belabor the point. I, I'm kind of with uh, Shoji in that I thought Africa was further away than the other options. So I had to pick something else and it didn't work. I'm like, well, I'm fairly confident these people are these people. So I'm just going to, yep. And I just kept picking different locations right. until it worked. So I don't know. Um. So, uh. Nas is saying that you can figure out the Africa part in the journal's intro because the forward, which is written by the doctor, uh, is one of the people who went to Africa. So maybe it was mentioned there, actually. That would make some sense. But what was that, Randy? Said, of course, I'm an idiot. Uh, there you go. Um, OK, well, I kind of want to want everyone to have a good amount of time to do final thoughts here. So uh, I think we can start doing that. We got about 10 minutes left here. So if anyone would like to go and sort of wrap up exactly a thought about it, there's a this is interesting. Um, you know, we had one guy didn't really get into it. Quite a few people who like really love this game. And I hear that from a lot of people. I think a couple people like me who really liked it and appreciated it, but it's not going to be. I would never say this is one of my favorite games or anything like that, but was still really happy to play. It. And yeah, that, that's what it is for me. I thought it was a really interesting game, really creative game. Definitely enjoyed playing it. It didn't really didn't hit me to my core in any way that maybe because some people are so flowery on it, I was maybe almost expecting it to. And it might be a case to where like hype was a bit of a downfall for it for me. Go ahead, Beef Hammer. Yeah, I think it's um at least for me, it's just that like it's it's the kind of game you're only going to get from an indie developer and especially one like no there was no way in hell a AAA company would say, yes, we would do the detective game about insurance broker with no combat in black and white. And it all looks like it was from like a Macintosh. I, but I think that's oh, also what color did you all pick? Also, by the way, let me know when you talk. What, I, uh, what monitor you picked or whatever it was. It's, it defaults to like greenish, right? I think. And I think yeah, I, I switched this. Just, I, definitely, I stuck with the default with that yeah, kind of greenish one. Yeah, I think this time I did change to black and white, so it's it doesn't look much different, and you get used to it. But I've never gone for like the blue. Or I think there's like a, I think there's an orange maybe. But yeah, I usually just stick to the default. Um, but yeah, so I think that's kind of why for me it stands out is just because it is very unique and something you're not gonna see about. And I do always usually appreciate that when it's like I'm never gonna play something like this again. So. That's for me. And obviously that comes with the risk that some people hate it and some people will be like that. This is just fine or just good. So that's at least my feelings on it. Right. And I uh, um, just want to say my coworker Rachel's in chat actually is, uh, was actually a big fan of this game and just said that she enjoyed it because 
She loves someone who knows how to create a good mystery without cheating. I know she loves these kind of games, and she was uh, very excited to learn that I was playing it. All right, uh, the rest of you, I'm going to start calling you. Oh, there you go. Go ahead, Shoji. Um, yeah, I'm really happy this game got selected. Um, it was on my backlog. Like I, I heard great things about it ever since it came out, and I just had never gotten around to playing it, so I'm super happy I had a chance to actually play it. Um, especially because I do love, you know, mystery and or detective games where you're solving things like this, you know, um, compared to something like, I don't know, uh, more quote unquote basic things, uh, like LA Noir, something like that, or even like the Forgotten City. Um, it's really interesting to see, um, you know, how this was done um but yeah super happy i played it and then in terms of my color palette for display i chose the second to last ibm setting it was not quite black and white but it was like an ever so slightly sepia tone not quite that full orange color as one of the middle options mm, nice 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 i like it i like it Ooh, audio thank you for following all right randy go ahead I chose the default theme because I just assume that the default is supposed to be the best experience. So that's you're a default got, kind I, of guy, right? Kind of, yeah. Well, you know, plain chips. That's, that's my <laughs> just a little salt, please. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, so I think this game is brilliant. I love it. I think my my big takeaway on this is that real life doesn't reward me enough for most things, and I make judgments and I and I make assumptions and have educated guesses all day and I'm never getting any feedback for it and have a having a game give that to me constantly as just the loop. Oh yeah, you you put this together and you get to feel good about that was just my jam. Uh, I really really liked it. All right, Inufe, just you left. So yeah, I mean final thoughts is I I really did uh like the game um in ter- I really liked also detective games, but you know, I and like Randy said the loop of just guessing at things and getting it right. But I guess I was always waiting for one really big twist to come at the end, maybe with the, the locked door like we talked about uh, in the Lazarette. And it never really got it. And maybe where games like, I love the um, Phoenix Wright games, and there's always crazy uh, twists in those. And I maybe have just got used to those and all those type of games and was expecting it, it is about it. the exact as far removed from a phoenix right as you could possibly 100 percent, huh? it is yeah um but i was just for waiting better for, and for worse twist. yeah um i was just waiting for that twist and i never really got it so i thought fe- i felt maybe the ending was another game where i was just a little bit let down by that ending at the very end um but other than that i think i was very uh, and I did play on the same IBM. Um, it's kind not quite orange, but it's almost very kind of sepia, brownish. Because um, okay. the default one gave me a headache, if I'm being honest. So. Oh, okay. Well, I see Sean has taken himself off mute. Oh, no, Sean, what did you want to <laughs> say? Uh, not really anything about the contents of the game, since obviously I didn't play enough to really say much about it tonight. I actually did have a meta comment on, like, the game as a whole though i'm just glad that games like this exist like especially since you know our last discussion was tears of the kingdom uh i'm just happy that like these sort of smaller very like beef was saying this is the kind of thing that only an indie developer could do and like this would not really at least in this form get greenlit as a triple a game and so i'm just glad that there's creators out there taking advantage of things like steam and like other platforms that allow easy distribution oh it's a sales ship not a steam ship to do things like this and uh i'm glad i'm glad y'all liked it to varying degrees uh because you know it's it's cool like even if it wasn't for me i'm just glad that more unique experiences exist especially because i've I've been playing some more indie-ish games like mike uh before we did this discussion we were playing you know 30xx and we were looking at that it's like man indie games are cool sometimes just the, the way they can be creative or the way they can do revive things or do ideas that won't get green light elsewhere so yeah I, I think i think this was a cool concept even if it wasn't for me i'm happy it's out there and i did by the way for why i did play use the default uh color scheme simply because it's why associated with the game from all the key art and everything all right well thank you all so much for joining me today talking about the obra din the game club will be back to talk about super metroid so look forward to that at some point around the end of 
this month. We'll get back to our normal schedule here. Uh, thank you again, everybody, for joining us. Please check out the Game Mess on YouTube. You can join our uh, Discord uh, too. You go to what? How do you how do you find the Discord, Sean? How's that work? GameMess.net. Very easy there. there. If you if you want to join the game club, you just have to be a Patreon member at uh, patreon.com slash game mess. Thank you so much, everybody. I will see you all very soon. You take care. And let's see. Where is it? Here you go. Enjoy your gaming. There you go. Thanks, Clive.